welcome to another episode of Lebanon Historical Society Presents. My name is Edward Ashey. I'm the curator of the Lebanon Historical Society. This has been videotaped in the Lane Dwinell Norris Cotton Room, which is uh, set at the cotton. In uh, Lane Dwinell, we have all these pictures and memorabilia around here, which is something everyone should try to come up and see at some point. We have open house on Memorial Day and Fourth uh, of July, Labor Day, and hopefully we can have more open houses, give more tours. On this episode, we will be discussing the recycling of buildings in Lebanon. Uh, a lot of that was done in the mid-1800s because of the scarcity of the lumber in this area. The whole upper valley was, the hills and mountains were pretty much bare. They had uh, harvested all the timber for, uh, to make farmland and to uh, build houses, factories, and to build the furniture and the tools in the, that they used in the factories. And they were used for fuel, and about the same time the railroad was going through, of course, they had to lay railroad ties for the rails. And the early locomotives burned fuel, the wood as fuel. So they pretty much clear-cut everything in the upper valley. Back in the 1880s, the uh, Stores Hill, which you can barely see because it's winter time, was completely bare of trees. You'd see a few here and there around the farmhouses or along the fence lines. And in the 1890s, when this picture was probably taken, yeah, that's about 1890s, the trees hadn't really come back yet. And now, that same mountain, Stores Hill, is completely covered with trees very thick vegetation and as you can see it's all grown in. There are houses up through there, new houses, but you wouldn't even know it now because there's so many trees that have grown back in. Back in the 1880s, uh, Ball Mountain or Signal Hill as it was known, was completely bare of trees. In the 1890s, some of the vegetation had started coming back along the bottom. This is when this picture was taken. And now, the whole mountain has trees on it. Back in the 1950s, it was only halfway up the hill. But in 2011, it's completely forested again. So that's how many years it took from the 18 80s to today to become reforested. So they pretty much clear cut everything in the upper valley. Logs were being brought down from up north in the spring. It would have log drives coming down the Connecticut River. And so therefore the price of lumber was more than when they could just take it off the hills around here. So they uh, started recycling homes, large buildings. Some buildings were put together with tongue and groove and then with a wooden peg through them so they could be dismantled easy. A lot of them were moved in one piece and usually during the winter time. They could put down a couple of large runners, drop the house on those and get a team of oxen or horses and they could move a house anywhere. It was like going across ice. And, uh, and the reason they moved buildings in the wintertime usually it was because the snow was packed down with snow rollers. And it was much easier to do it then by putting them on, a, on skids and hauling them with either oxen or, or a team of horses. And the snow rollers were huge. They, uh, they were taller than some of the horses and they, they would roll all the streets. They didn't plow them back then. And everybody 
instead of using wagons, they hauled out their sleighs for the winter travel. Their version of the snow tires, I guess. This is another view of the snow roller going around the common, packing down the snow. And uh, it was quite efficient. I don't know who came up with the idea, but it was better than plowing, I think. <laughs> when the snow roller finally got their job done, there was a lot of snow in front of the buildings. So they would uh, bring in their version of uh, uh, present-day dump trucks, load the snow into the huge uh, sleds with sides on them, shovel the snow into those, and then they would take it somewhere and, and dump it out. Over on Mascoma Lake, when the ice would freeze in the wintertime, that's when they would move the cottages. This is a cottage with the porch attached, and they would move the whole thing right across the ice. It was uh, quite, a, quite a job, I would think, but I would have thought they would have taken the porch off or something like that, but they didn't. They, they raised the whole building and the porch. In this, in this case, they used a team of horses. This is another building uh, cottage that they were attempting to move across the lake and didn't have much luck with. It uh, sank in, they unhooked the horses, and it looks like they were trying to pry it out. I think I would be running in the opposite direction at that point, but uh, there they are trying to pry it out of the ice. I don't believe they could have been successful in doing that, but uh, they'll give them an A for effort, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> this is an amateur photo of showing them uh, moving a one-room schoolhouse up on Mount Support. It was, uh, they had quite a team of horses on that, and again, winter time. And they were moving it to a new, lo new location where it uh, became a, somebody's home and somewhere we've got pictures of it in later years it being used as a home and it was added on to uh, extended out and of course out buildings added on so it was being lived in uh, up in the 1950s and then at some point they had a flyer there i believe who destroyed some of it but uh, i believe it's still up there this is this shows a barn up in Vermont being moved in the summertime. Um, it could be done because they would put down logs and then they would either put lard or grease on the logs so that they could slide along easily. Uh, when they moved a, a building with doors and windows in it, they would take all the doors and windows out to, to uh, well, to save breaking them for one thing and also to lighten it up a little bit. But they could move a whole building, even bigger, larger buildings than this. And uh, so it could be done in the summertime. But like I said, most of the time they, they preferred wintertime. These are the logs that they would pull the building along on, on these skids. Usually a team of oxen, that's oxen that they're using there. The um, house I'm going to talk about on this video is one that was on South Park Street. This is an 1853 map of Lebanon, the center. And there's the common, Summer Street, which is now South Park Street. South Street is now School Street. And this is where the Wareham Moss was, the store. And it faced the common and it had a little L on the back that was moved. When uh, Mr. Moss died, the house was sold, and Mr. Willis, who owned this brick house that faced School Street, wanted his house turned a quarter turn to face the common. So he sold that building, and I believe it was Mr. Sturdivant moved the building over onto 6 Green Street and it's still there now. The small L was moved down onto 56 Mascoma Street and became another house. So Mr. Willis was able to turn the house a quarter turn facing the common and that's the way it sits today and it is now the uh, 
Chamber of Commerce office is in that building. Lebanon Chamber of Commerce. So the house they moved over onto Green Street. It's basically the, this here. They modified it by putting in a couple more doors and made an apartment house. But when it was on facing the common, it had you know, four or five Lombardi poplars in front of it, a couple of benches for the men to sit on and discuss the politics of the day. And it was uh, originally a single story, and then they raised it and made a second story, which the uh, Granite State Free Press used as an offices. And this picture was taken oh, probably 10, 15 years ago. It had still some of the original clapboards and columns on the corners, but they added the two doors on each side to make an apartment house. And just recently, in recent years, they put vinyl siding on it, so it looks a little different. And that's the L that was on the back of the, the old store. It was used for loading and storage. And that was moved down to 56 Mascoma Street. where it became the front part of the house. And about 1855, they built onto the back of it. And so it eventually looked like that about 1857. Single story house with a porch on the front. And sometime after that, shortly after that, they raised the roof to make a second story and that's how it looked in 1968, pretty much the same from the 1850s right up to 68. When I purchased the house shortly afterwards, I took off the front porch and made a new entryway and added blinds and made it more, more colonial style. And that's the way it pretty much looks today. So this whole front piece right here is from the old L. And when you go up in the attic, you can still see the, the pegs on the front part of the roof that were used in the original, uh, to put the original roof together. This is up in the attic of the uh, 56 Mascoma Street. You can see the Roman numerals on the beams because they were all handcrafted. They would, could not be interchanged. So they had to have the exact same beams going together. And then there was a beam, uh, a peg that went through. You can see the little point on it. And that's what held it all together. So when they reassembled them, everything would fit perfectly. Nowadays with the machine parts, you can interchange parts and it's no problem. The House that they moved over into Green Street, I believe they moved in one piece. And I believe they did that in the winter time. And it was easier to put it up on skids. And it was a short distance, so they would have moved it in one piece. Some of the other buildings around, if they were large buildings, they they did the same thing. They would take them and put it, take them in, cut them in half. Take one half on down one street, take another half in another street. They wouldn't, like the building that was here before the Carter House. It was uh, a huge building, and so they took it and moved one piece up, one section up to uh, Bank Street, and they moved another section, I forgot where they put the other section, but they made smaller homes out of one large home. And the old school up on School Street, was a large two-story building and that one they they used the timbers the framing and they took that over to West Lebanon and at the foot of Seminary Hill right by the lights you'll see a large apartment house there those timbers were, were the framing for that house and that's uh, then they built the 
brick school that it's in now. So there's a lot of homes that are moved around back then, recycled on a huge scale. There was one house, I can't remember where it is, but it was moved up from Grantham, New Hampshire, to Lebanon and made into a home up here. So that one I was assumed they dismantled. The old Lafayette Hotel that was on the common down by where the Whipple Block is was a large, long building, and they took one half of that and put it down on Benton Hill on Mascoma Street, halfway down the hill, and made a made a business out of that one. Then the other half they took over onto North Park Street, and that became uh, that became another store. I, I can't remember the name offhand, and. Uh, The, uh, I believe they moved those in one piece right after they had, took it and uh, split it in half. And there's, I could probably, if I had time, I probably could think of 10 or 12 houses right off that were moved up the street or across town. Or, so they did a lot of moving of buildings. In fact, the the town hall, and they called it the meeting house, that used to be on the common. And it was facing the Whipple block. And they, they put that up on blocks and moved it in one piece across the street to where the city hall is now. And they remodeled that and made it a more modern, bigger town hall. And that burned in 1923, and that's why they built the building that's there now, which is a city hall. So there was a lot of big time moving, recycling of buildings back then. There was a one room schoolhouse up on Mount Support. And I've seen a picture of that being moved in the winter time with a team of horses. And they moved that to another spot and converted it into a home. And I believe that home is still up there too, but it got added on to, so it looks a lot different. But it was originally one room schoolhouse up there. So, yeah, there was another small one on Green Street, somewhere in the vicinity of the Baptist, where the Baptist Church is. Uh, that was moved over and back of the, the old town hall, and it became a police station at one time. It became a bicycle shop at one time. It was used for several businesses. A bakery, I believe, also. And that, that eventually was demolished and taken down. But it was a very small building. And that would have been uh, probably mid-1800s also, because the Baptist Church was built in 1870. Recycling is still going on today. Unfortunately, many of them have been, they just get demolished, flattened, or burned down for practice, but there are a few that uh, have been recycled just this past year. They uh, took a house from West Lebanon and moved it all the way over onto uh, Dulac Street because the woman, it was a house that her and her husband owned for many years, and she didn't want to part with it, and she had it moved. They moved it over onto Dulac Street and set it up there, and it's been re rebuilt and ready to, and is being lived in. Uh, they had to do that because of the they were widening the road over there, down where Garish Motors is now. There used to be a brick two-story brick house there. It was called the Breck Potter Woods Home. And several families owned it. It was built by Mr. Potter, one of the first brick makers of Lebanon. And when they decided to move that to make room for the Kentucky Fried Chicken that went in there at the time, that was moved up the hill about a half a mile, I believe, up uh, Poverty Lane and that was moved in one piece. 
and it became more of a job than they thought it would be, but they finally got it up there. So that's just another example of more recent. That was probably in the 1960s, I would say, maybe 70s. But uh, those are the two more recent ones that I can recall. Well, I guess that will do it for this episode. And the answer to the, the trivia question, uh, when did Lebanon become a city, was in 1958. And if you want to get more information, you can go to LebanonNHHistory.org and email is lebhistsoc at aol.com. Thank you for watching tonight's show and I hope you enjoyed it.